Good morning and welcome to worship with the Londonderry Presbyterian Church. My name is Cindy Coleman and it is my pleasure to join you this morning and to fill in for Pastor Carla Diaz. It's good for her to have just a little breathing space and I'm glad to join you in her place. This morning I have a few announcements to share with you. First of all that Pastor Carla has been uh, taking that time to breathe, to study, to rest, and she will return this coming week refreshed and renewed. Second, the Walking Together group will meet via Zoom at 7 p.m. And if you have any questions about that, please contact Linda Harvey. And then third, Please remember to continue to give your tithes and offerings to the church during this time. We may not be meeting physically with one another, but the church is still active. The church is open because the body of Christ is gathering. So please send your tithes and offerings in by mail to the church building and that will enable uh, this ministry to continue. So let us worship God. Our scripture passage this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. Listen for the word of the Lord. Jesus is speaking. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, these words of love and presence come all around us in these days when so much is uncertain, when we feel often so alone. We are reminded that you have promised to be with us. You have promised to send an advocate, a comforter, your spirit, that you love us and that you will remain with us. Help us hear these words afresh this day. Help us know deep in our hearts in the very marrow of our bones that you have not and will not abandon us. You will not leave us orphaned. And in fact, you claim us each and every day as your beloved children. Be with us and help us hear again how you would have us live to show the world what it is to know you and be loved by you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
This passage in the Gospel of John is continuing Jesus' discourse that night when he gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is still the night that we call Maundy Thursday, the night before he is arrested. This is still the night when he took bread and broke it, when he washed the disciples' feet. In the Gospel of John, Jesus spends quite a while trying to prepare the disciples for what is about to happen, even though they don't understand. Even though, if we're honest, we often don't understand either. These words, these words are meant to be assurance and comfort. They don't understand that Jesus will be arrested in a few hours. They don't understand that he will be crucified and die. They don't understand that he will be raised from the dead. They don't understand yet, but they will. And they'll look back on this night and they'll remember these words and they'll hold them close. Hear them again. If you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. Do you hear all the things that Jesus is pointing to in these words, the, the days that are just around the corner and even further, the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost? Jesus is trying to prepare the disciples for things they have no way to understand that night in that space. And yet things that are foundational and true. Jesus did leave them for a little while, and then Jesus returned to them. Jesus did ask the Father for another advocate, and the Spirit came upon them at Pentecost. And Jesus did say to them, if you love me, you will show the world what that means by keeping my commandments. And you know what those are. You know what Jesus said are the most important commandments. To love God with all of who we are, our whole heart and mind and soul and strength, to love our neighbors as ourselves. And the disciples did that too. The stories in the book of Acts of how the disciples came together and, and began this new movement where all people were fed, where no one's need was left unfilled, where people joined them day by day because of this witness to love and grace and mercy. The disciples lived into this as well. These words are for us today, too. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We don't know what the end of this time of global pandemic and this time of, of physical separation in order to keep one another safe. We don't know when everything will be quote unquote normal again. We don't. We can't. What we know is what's happening today. What we know is what we can do now to reduce risk and to show the world what it means to be followers of Jesus, what it means to love God, what it means to love our neighbors. And yet, even as we don't know, just as the disciples didn't know, these words are still true. Jesus will not abandon us in this time, no. In fact, we know that the Holy Spirit has already been received, and we know that if we ask, if we ask, 
that God will send that spirit afresh upon us and the church today. And in fact, I would say that is already happening. Look at how the church is dispersed and deployed into the world and yet bound together with bonds of love and by the breath and the fire of the spirit. We may be worshiping in our living rooms and at our dining room tables. We may be worshiping in spaces that we never thought the church would enter into, and yet it has. And yet the body of Christ is alive and well, even as it has been stretched in all of these ways. We have not been abandoned. We have been emboldened. We have not been orphaned. We have instead adopted even more as this digital way of reaching out, of being disciples of Jesus, of showing love. This digital format is reaching more people who might have been scared to go to a church, who might not have had that Sunday morning off, but can watch a video any time during the week, who can get a video emailed to them or see it posted on social media and interact with Jesus, interact with God. In so many ways, we as the church, as the body of Christ, are even more what Jesus hoped we would be. We are going and making disciples to the ends of the earth. Is this the way we wanted to do it? I'm not sure anyone would say that. But we can embrace this time and embrace these promises. We have not been forgotten. We have not been orphaned. We have not been left to our own devices. Instead, God is ever present, ready to respond to our cries of help. And the Spirit is moving. We know the love of God, maybe even more intensely in these days when we are separated physically from one another. So how do we continue to show the world in the days and weeks, and yes, I believe months to come, when we continue to be dispersed and deployed as the body of Christ? How do we continue to show what it is to be followers of Jesus who obey his commandments? And those commandments are rooted in love. Love for God, love for one another love for every single person on this earth. Yes, love for the person who you think should have a mask on and love for you if you don't think you should either. Love for those who are working at the grocery stores and helping deliver takeout meals. Love for those who are in the hospitals and the clinics wearing masks until the bridges of their nose crack and bleed in order to care for any who are sick and in need. How do we show love? Love for one another, which springs from love of God. Even in this time, and maybe especially in this time, when we are deployed and dispersed as the body of Christ, we need to, in word and in deed, in action and in spirit, share that love wherever we go. And we need to look for ways for that love to be made tangible and flesh. We need to look for ways to make sure that that love is extended, not just in an emotional sense, but in a physical sense. You may remember the story from the book of Acts where a man is begging for silver, hoping that someone will put a coin into his hands. And Peter says to him, Gold and silver I have none, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. We may feel that we may not have money to give. And in fact, if we've lost our jobs and our 
hoping for unemployment benefits, or if we know that those jobs will not return, we may be the ones asking for help. How do we respond out of love, out of grace and mercy, with what we have already received? How do we show that being followers of Jesus Christ sets us apart in this world? So that not only do we say we love our neighbors, we work so that all people have what they need. The disciples didn't know what was coming. I'm sure they didn't understand what Jesus was trying to say to them that night. And yet they sought to be faithful. They continued to gather, even as we gather here digitally. They gathered. They continued to pray and ask for direction, even as we continue to pray and ask for God to lead us. And when the time was right, the Spirit descended. My friends, I hope you receive these words both as comfort and as a little bit of challenge. We are not orphaned. We are not forgotten or abandoned. We are loved. We are loved so deeply and so richly and eternally. But we are also meant to be bearers of that love into this world. Bearers of good news, gospel, witnesses to what it means to be part of the body of Christ. May we both be comforted and live into what Jesus hopes of us. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Holy, everlasting, merciful God, we are so grateful for the ways that you bind us together, even when our physical ability to gather is limited. We are so grateful for the ways your spirit flows in and through us just as breath goes in and out of our lungs. We are so grateful for the gift of your son who came to save us and to show us how to live in a way that brings glory to you. We are so grateful for how you have claimed us as your own. Knowing that we have received so many blessings just from these things that have just been named, we come to you. We come to you with the prayers of our hearts. We come to you with prayers for the world for our communities, for our congregation, and for ourselves. Lord, as the world continues to grapple with the outbreak of COVID-19, as governments continue to struggle with how to stop and slow the spread of a virus that, that lays people low, we pray that you will grant wisdom to world leaders in the places where there are wars and conflict ongoing or where people are hungry because of famine or distress or where other illnesses have already been ravaging the country. Lord, we pray that you will be the healer, the great physician, rest, reaching out your hands to heal. We pray that you will be the Prince of Peace and that in your peace, you will bring peace to all lands. Lord, we pray for our own country and our own communities. May our leaders nationally and locally also be filled with your wisdom and compassion. May decisions be made that honor those who are most vulnerable, that seek to stem loss of life and put people ahead of profit. Lord, grant our leaders those compassionate hearts that don't see numbers, 
but instead see faces and hear stories. Lord, in our own communities, as our neighbors are struggling, help us to be the hands and feet of Christ as that school term ends and school lunches which have been provided, even though schools are closed, as those come to an end, help us know how we can help feed those who are hungry. Help us know how we can provide care for those who are suffering and struggling. Help us see how we can be part of helping our communities be strong and have all that they need. We pray for this congregation particularly, Lord, for Londonderry Presbyterian Church. We pray that you will bind them together in bonds of love that are strengthened during this time, that this time of physical separation will help Focus for them the mission and ministry you are calling them to do, that they will see that they are the body of Christ, not because of a building they gather in, but because of the faith that brings them together. Help them know how you are calling them to follow your commandments now, to love you and to love their neighbors. Lord, we also bring to you our personal prayers, the joys, the griefs and sorrows, the celebrations and the deep losses, the fears, the illnesses, the hopes, the dreams, the things that we carry in our hearts that we share with those who love us, and we share with you. Grant healing to those who are ill, comfort to those who are dying. Grant compassion to those who mourn and comfort all those who sorrow. Where we rejoice and are filled with gladness for blessings seen and received, we give you thanks and pray that that rejoicing will continue even as we find ways to comfort and care for each other. All these prayers we bring to you, we lay them at your feet, we entrust them to your care, knowing that you hear us when we pray and you answer, maybe not in the ways we expect or even want, but you answer our prayers for you are faithful and just. Hear us now as we pray, as Jesus taught his disciples saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so my friends, as you look forward to another week and our uncertain of what each day might bring or the week after that or the month after that. Know that no matter what, Jesus goes with us. The spirit breathes in and through us and God has not abandoned us. We are adopted as children and heirs in Christ and nothing will change that. Not even a worldwide pandemic. So take heart, be comforted, and in your comfort, share the love that you have received with all you come in contact with, near and far. And may our holy God surprise you with blessings along the way. May Christ Jesus be your companion and friend each and every day on this journey. And may the Holy Spirit lift you up in life and peace, in love and joy, in courage, 
and strength now and forevermore. Amen.